What if the Holy Roman Empire was Holy Roman and an Empire? The HRE in our timeline wasn't real an empire, but more of confederation of men, free cities, principalities, duchies and kingdoms loyal to an emperor, but that wasn't even the case ever since 1648. Thus the empire was very ineffective. And weak and ununited German state wouldn't exist until 1871. But what if that didn't happen? What if in an alternative timeline the Holy Roman Empire was Holy Roman and an empire? In this timeline the HRE is an actual empire. And the Emperor has full control over it like other empires. For example the Eastern Roman Empire, or the German Empire. This causes the Emperor not to install his own bishops, which caused a schism between Emperor and Pope. In this timeline they still hold good relations. And the Pope also wouldn't oppose Frederick II from making southern Italy part of the Empire. The Emperor would be hereditary and not elected. After the Ottonians, Salians and Zeppelinburg die out the House of Hohenstaufen starting with Frederick Barbaros rules until they to go extinct. Current the House of Widdlespatch, the royal house in Bavaria until 1918 rules the empire under Francis I. The Crusades still happen, but the empire being united doesn't real change anything, but at one point the lands of the Teutonic Knights are incorporated into the HRE. A war between England and France still erupts in 1337, but here the HRE joins the war on the side of England, and together they partition France into East, which is annexed by the HRE, and West which is annexed by England. But England becomes the Kingdom of France as that is what its monarchs saw themselves. They didn't saw themselves as English, but French. After the House of Plantage it dies out the House of Beaufort rules France until today. Its king is Henry IV, who is the 12th Duke of Beaufort. They would at one point militarily conquer Scotland and Ireland. A Protestant Reformation would still occur, but without a decentralized empire something like the Treaty of Augsburg is unrealistic, and just like France in our own timeline they would kill them all. Also without the Tudors England slash France wouldn't be Protestant. So only Denmark, Norway, and Sweden are Protestant. In 1492 Castile and Aragon would still conquer Grenade. And after the death of Johann the Habsburg take over, but they aren't monarchs within the empire, but just a noble family. In 1700 Carlos II dies, but not the Bourbons, but the Habsburg succeed him starting with Carlos III meaning that the Austrian monarchs from 1711 would rule Spain. Also there is no Thirty Years War as there is no Protestantism within the HRE, which causes them to keep Portugal. The Ottomans still rise, 
But when they annex hunger, the Habsburg won't take the West as they don't control their land, which means that the HRE control all of it. They would besiege the capital of the HRE, because that isn't Vienna, which is right next to them, but Aachen, which is west of the Rhine, and so both empires would just not fight each other as both are too powerful. The Ottomans still control the same territories, and without nationalism they don't destabilize. Sweden doesn't own Livonia as it is part of the HRE, which causes Poland to not join the anti-Swedish alliance meaning own the Russian Tsardom, and Denmark Norway fight them. The latter is quick defeated, and Rush is also defeated as they were alone. Sweden annexes Norway. Iceland and Greenland from Denmark, and Kerli, Mermans and Novgorod from Rush. Unfortunately for Poland, they would still get partitioned. The Holy Roman Empire annexes the Polish half except for Ruthenia, and the Russian Tsardom annexes the Lithuanian half, and Ruthenia. The HRE is more centralized, and they have colonies in the Americas, which look something like this. There is no Seven Years' War, and so they and France keep their colonies. USA isn't independent, and a French Revolution doesn't take place. This causes that the English who don't even exist, do not own Bengal meaning no Raj, and the Marath Empire still exists. But they collapse like an Indian dynasty, and India is balkanized. Other nations like France, the HRE, Persia or King China would expand their influence in this region. Without an East Indie Company controlling Indy, the Opium Wars never take place, meaning that the century of humiliation doesn't take place. The great powers would still force Japan to open up, who would annex Korea, Taiwan, but also the Lyoning Peninsula as no great power shows an interest in China. After the death of the Dowager Empress in 1908, the Qing Dynasty starts reforms and a massive industrialization. Japan would try to prevent this with a second Sino-Japanese war in the late 20s or early 30s but they would lose and have to return their gains from the previous war and would become a Chinese client state. A war with France and Russia against the HRE would break out in the late 90s or early 20th century. The HRE would win, and the Ottomans would also join their side. The HRE annexes mainland France, and puppets the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The Ottomans puppet the Southern Caucasus, and Purge which is a Russian vassal state becomes independent. But they have to return the Ottomans their gains from 1590. France also has to give its North American and African colonies to the HRE. I could see an anti-Roman coalition forming to break the hegemon of the HRE. It is between Iberia, France, Sweden, the Ottoman Empire and Russia and at one point a war might break out 
which either side could win. Nature is the great power of the world. They have a large and professional army, a large colonial empire, and the number one economy. They were the first nation with nukes, and still hold the most. In this timeline the world is more feudal like before the French Revolution, and a lot changed, but all nations are absolute monarchies. Except for the Republic of San Marino. If you liked the episode leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.